One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. With one voice, with one voice, the angels sing songs that make creation ring. Prophets hear and call us to live in spirit and in truth. Word of God and throne, dwell in us forevermore. Love has come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, power, and peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, as we gather this morning to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we gather around the Lord's table. I'd like us to look for a moment in our lives at our faith. Um, you and I oftentimes go through difficulties that require the power of our faith to sustain us through them. But the real question is what we do to build our faith so that our faith is stronger each time we need it. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and bring each and every one of us into everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Oh, 
Let us pray. O oh God, who teaches us that you abide in the hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava state, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots into a stream it fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green in the year of drought. It shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. Happy are they who hope in the Lord. Happy are they who hope in the Lord, fruitful the work of their hands. Blessed are they who cherish your law, who ponder by day and by night. Happy are they who hope in the Lord, fruitful the work of their hands. Your law in their hearts are dust that is blown by the reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level stretch of ground. There was a great crowd of his disciples and large numbers of people from all Judea and Jerusalem, even from the coastal regions of Tyre and Sidon. Raising his eyes towards his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, exclude you, insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice, leap for joy on that day. Your reward will be great in heaven. Their ancestors treated the prophets in exactly that way. But woe to you who are rich, you are enjoying your consolation now. Woe to those who are filled now, you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh today, for you will grieve and weep. And woe to you when everyone speaks well of you. Their ancestors treated the false prophets in exactly that way. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. There's a story that I tell about an experience I had uh, very shortly after coming to Nativity of Our Lady. I was on a, a nonstop flight going from uh, Manhattan to San Francisco. And we were about 15 minutes into the flight. Uh, the flight attendants had just started serving the drinks. And the pilot came over the intercom and with no preamble, no explanation, uh, nothing, he just said very abruptly, flight attendants, take your seats. And there must have been something in the, in the code of that that indicated that they needed to respond immediately because I saw the flight attendants do something I've never seen them do before. They, they locked the carts down onto the ground and they just sat on the aisle. They just sat down on the floor of the aisle, the flight attendants. I'm assuming that when he says it that way, that that's an indication that there's no time to get the, the trolleys back to the gallery and, and the, uh, the flight attendants to strap in. He's, he's saying it's urgent. But regardless, um, we then entered into a, a sustained period of what I would define as extreme turbulence. I was sitting in the back of the plane, and they say it's always worse back there, but this, this is what I experienced. It, it felt as if the plane was being twisted and torqued in the sky, and then it would drop, boom, like that. And it would twist and torque, boom, twist and torque, boom, for 45 minutes. And I think the thing that made it even more anxiety producing was that the pilot never came over the loudspeaker to say, you know, what was happening. You know, I don't know about the rest of you, but in those moments, I want that Charlton Heston pilot voice to come over the loudspeaker and say to me that everything's going to be fine and just hold on and we're getting through this rough period and everything's going to be all right. When they say nothing, then what my overactive imagination says to me is that the pilot is clutching the steering column and trying with all of his might to keep the plane from plunging to the surface of the earth. So um, obviously that was a long time ago, but it's something that is um, very much in my mind. I, 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 can, I can think about it and boom, I'm right back in that cabin and, and the helpless feeling that I had when I was there. As I look back on it, it's fascinating to consider the various different reactions that people were having during the turbulence. So I was in a plane that had three seats, the aisle, and then three seats, and I was on the aisle. So the woman that was sitting directly next to me, 
she was having a full-blown anxiety attack. So she actually had her hands braced on the seat back in front of her. She had her head down, and she was hyperventilating. The girl that was at the window, there was this young woman that was at the window, she was in full zen mode. Okay? Her legs were curled into the lotus position. She had her palms open at her thighs. She was practicing yoga breath. This girl was at one with the universe. I mean, she was absolutely, completely undisturbed by the fact that the plane was bouncing around in the sky. And the gentleman on the aisle across from me never stopped working on his laptop, not once. <laughs> I was very close at one point to leaning over and saying, excuse me, I'm, I'm so sorry, but we're crashing. <laughs> no, unless that's an email to Jesus, I suggest you join me in prayer. <laughs> and yours truly was actually praying the rosary, <laughs> audibly. <laughs> when I think back on that experience and, and the, kind of the, the trauma that it, it really manifested for me in many ways, I often ask myself the question, how do you become like that girl at the window? How do you, how in the midst of turbulence are you able to be calm and serene and centered? And I'm not just talking about air travel. I mean in the turbulence of life. Life is turbulent. You know, I, I don't care how successful you are, how wealthy you are, you know, how healthy you are. The, the fact of the matter is that there is, in the journey of life, a tremendous amount of upheaval. Something is going to happen in your life, whether it is to do with family or money or health or work. And so in the midst of this inevitability, how do you remain calm and centered and serene and confident? And it seems to me that the prophet Jeremiah in this first reading from the Old Testament is really, in a sense, giving us a blueprint for how to, how to cultivate that state of mind. First of all, he, he has this beautiful image of the tree. He, he says, the person of faith is like a tree that is planted by, by running streams. He, he says, it, it reaches out its roots to the water and that it is thereby being fed intravenously by this spring, that it has an inner strength. So when the drought comes and, and it decimates all of the other trees and the foliage, this tree will remain strong and green and secure because it has this inner strength coming from, from within it. See, the, the idea is that if you are a person of faith, you possess an inner strength that will sustain you in the time of crisis. So as I've sort of analyzed that reading and, and thought about it in, in light of the Beatitudes, it, it occurs to me that for the person who's interested in cultivating that serene, centered, focused, calm persona in the midst of, of calamity, that there are three elements that we need to cultivate. The first, as Jeremiah says, is faith. So first of all, to identify, I am a person of faith. I believe in God. I believe that there's an intelligent designer. I believe that, that there is a God who is a creator. I believe in, in the fact that God came to us in the person of Jesus Christ. I believe that there is a, a spirit of God that exists between these two forces and that is within me, that I am a believer. To identify yourself as a believer. But also it seems to me that, that in that faith, we need to nourish it. You know, it, it says, he says there, the roots of the tree stretch out toward the stream. That indicates that there needs to be some, some activity on our part. We're not just waiting for God to do all of the work, but we are nourishing and encouraging this faith. So how do we do that? Well, as Roman Catholics, you're doing it right now. You've made time on a Sunday morning, Super Bowl Sunday, I might add, to come to church. You're listening to the Word of God. You're being nourished at the Eucharistic table. You're steeping yourself in this atmosphere of sanctity and holiness. By doing so, you are nourishing your faith. When you extend forgiveness, when you make a sacrifice, when you cultivate your prayer life, all of those efforts are going to nourish and strengthen the faith within you. So faith is number one. The, the second thing that I'd like to consider today, I'm going to call understanding. 
And what I mean by that, everybody, is the attempt to broaden our understanding of what it means to be a person of faith as we live our lives. And specifically, what I would like you to consider is the banishment of the idea that, that our spiritual life is a kind of insurance policy. So I will do what God is asking me to do, and in return, God will prevent me from any misfortune. I'd like to see us get rid of that ideology because what, that, what comes from that is that when suffering occurs in the life of a faithful person, inevitably what they say to me as the priest is, clearly I've done something wrong because now God is punishing me. God isn't punishing you. You need to wipe that off your screen. God does not punish us by, by inserting cancer into us or, or some sort of financial failure. It doesn't work that way. Rather, suffering is a part of the human condition. It's not about retribution. It's not about anger. Jesus says it over and over and over again. Suffering is just a part of the human story. And so earnestly did Jesus want you to learn that lesson that he himself suffered so that we might understand that it's not a question of preference. It's a part of the experience. And what he's saying in the Beatitudes is that there is actually a grace and a wisdom that can be acquired through suffering. Now, I am not saying, nor is Jesus, that one should seek suffering. What I'm saying is that in the inevitability of suffering, that it is possible to glean insight and wisdom and strength and grace that will not come to you any other way. So faith and understanding, and lastly is trust. To trust that God is going to get you where you need to be. I, I wish I could say that in, in a way that is a little bit more pragmatic, but that's really what I'm trying to say, that, that God is going to get you where you need to be. It, it's the idea, everybody, and I'm, I'm not sure if everyone's had this experience, where you have some sort of a, something happens in your life that you define as being a, a punishment or, or a calamity or a misfortune of some kind. And then years later, when you look back at that experience, you realize that actually it was a blessing, that the thing that you considered to be a torment in many ways actually saved you from something far worse. To trust that God has a greater wisdom and understanding than you or I could possibly possess. To trust and to believe that God is going to get you exactly where you need to be. So faith, understanding, and trust. I believe that if we can invest ourselves into these three things, cultivate them, work in establishing them more profoundly in our mind and our heart and our spirit, that we will find ourselves becoming more calm, more serene, more peaceful, unruffled in the face of uncertainty and upheaval. You're going to need these three things no matter how secure you feel right now. You're going to need them. You're going to need them when you're awaiting the results of the biopsy. You're going to need them when you find out that there's been a shooting at your child's school. And you're absolutely going to need them when the plane you're on is falling from the sky. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Having heard the word of God, we now look at our world around us and in our own lives and gather these needs in the presence of our God. For Pope Francis, for Bishop Danny, and for parish leaders in our diocese, and for all the people of God, that we might prayerfully participate in the church's synodal process, that the Holy Spirit might guide us towards greater understanding. We pray to the Lord. We pray always and everywhere for peace, for diplomatic resolutions to political and territorial conflicts, and for wise and compassionate leadership. We pray to the Lord. For the hungry, the weeping and persecuted, for all those facing storms they feel overwhelmed by, that the love of God and the peace of God might be a consolation that brings them from despair into hope. For this, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all healthcare workers and their families as our diocese honors them this week, in gratitude for their service and with continued prayers for their safety and well being. We pray to the Lord. For those who share the gifts of welcome and hospitality, the many volunteers who serve in our parish ministries as greeters and ushers, lectors and musicians, altar servers and sacristans, those who help to make our liturgical space a welcoming home. We pray that they might continue to share the love of God, not just here in our worship space, but with everyone they meet. For our volunteers and for the Nativity of Our Lady parish community, we pray to the Lord. Grateful for the gifts of life, for those who make us laugh, who help us to grow in wisdom and love, for Peyton and Zena Huff on their anniversary, and for Juliana Winninghoff, and for our pastor, Father Matt, on their birthdays. May God's grace and good humor be with them today and always. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, the suffering, the dying, and those who care for them, we say their names aloud at this time. May the power of the Holy Spirit bring all those who are ill to the fullness of health and well being. We pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of Tom and Jean Lukes, Dick Ford, and all those we have loved and lost, may they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Father, in complete confidence that you hear and consider our needs, that you always act for our benefit, we come before you again with needs, as we always do. In the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord.
Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in Lord, still I will sing, blessed be the name of the Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise, praise of the Lord, Lord of his name, for all our good of the all of his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always, everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, you once led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany us by the power of the Holy Spirit, leading us along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom. And so with the angels and saints, we too join in the hymn of your glory, as without end we sing. Yes. 
blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of blessing giving thanks that you felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may, gather, may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Danny, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, and in him. O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share now a sign of the Lord's peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be you. fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may always long for the food by which we truly live. We ask us in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. 
When Father Jim heard my story about the airplane and the girl at the window who was perfectly calm, his one and only question was, where exactly was the drink cart at that moment? <laughs> I, I'm hoping that um, some of you during these, this month of February are considering the possibility of getting involved in our greeter and usher ministry. Um, this is becoming, it's become more demanding here for us in the sense that we need more people. Um, celebrating Mass here in the pavilion is, is fairly complicated. There's, there's a lot of different elements, and we have, since Christmas time, we've been making it available for people who maybe feel safer staying in their cars and just coming forward for communion. So consequently, we, we really could use some more support in that regard. So if this is something you would consider being a part of, this greeting and, and ushering ministry, we'd like you to come to a, a training and informational meeting that's going to happen on the weekend of February 26th and 27th. That's basically two weeks from now. We're going to do it after every Mass to make it as, as convenient as possible. We'll do it after the 4 o'clock on Saturday, the, the 8 o'clock on Sunday, and the 11 o'clock on Sunday, where we're going we're gonna to basically tell you what it's about, do some training, and then, and then have a commissioning. And um, just, just please know how much we need you. I know sometimes people listen and they think, oh, they don't need me. We need you. We need you. This is, uh, this is something that would really lend us and make it easier for us as we're celebrating Mass out here. It would make it easier, and also it enables us to extend hospitality to, to our parishioners and to our guests. So once again, everybody, give that some thought. You've got two weeks, and, and know that you're very much needed and wanted. If not, um, if you didn't already receive it, uh, you'll probably get it in the next day or two, our, uh, our mailing to you about the annual ministries appeal. This is basically the, um, the fundraiser that the bishop does every year to support the ministries of the Diocese of Monterey. So basically each parish is evaluated based on their collection and they're given a goal, a financial goal, and then everything that we collect over that goal we get to keep for our ministries here at Nativity of Our Lady. Now you may have noticed if you've been here for a while that we have not done the AMA. We've not done it for three years. And the reason for that was we were having a capital campaign, raising the star. And we didn't want you to be hit over and over again with financial requests. So when we designed raising the star, we did it in such a way that we folded in our AMA assessment. So basically when you were giving to raising the star, you were also helping to support the AMA. But the raising the star is over. The, the, the capital campaign has ended the three-year pledge period. So consequently, it's time once again for us to do the AMA. So we've sent that out to you. Um, in, the, in the packet, there's a letter from me, from the bishop, and a brochure describing where all of the, the funds are being, how they're being allocated. And so what I'm hoping, everybody, is that you'll take it, you'll, you'll, you'll give it a, a look-see, maybe some, some prayerful reflection, and make a pledge, and do so by the end of the month. Um, there are parishes that do the AMA, and they... They have it going for six months. You know, it just goes on and on and on, and it's, it's exhausting. So my hope is we can kind of do it in the month of February and be done with it. So fill it out, and you can put it in the collection basket or drop it through the mail slot in the office when you come to church or just drop it in the mail to us, um, whichever is most convenient for you. And I'm sure the bishop would want me to say thank you to all of you for your generosity. For those of you who like to use a collection envelope, in your donation. Um, you may have noticed uh, Deacon Tom made an announcement a couple of weeks ago that the printer that we used has been having all sorts of staffing issues and they simply, not only were they not able to print them in time for the beginning of the year, but they had no uh, idea when they were gonna be able to get them printed. So uh, Deacon Tom has found another printer and uh, they're rolling along on that and we should have those within the next week or two. If you don't get your envelopes the next two weeks or so, give us a call and uh, we'll make sure that you get a box as well. Because uh, it's Matthew's birthday, as any of you who watch the news reports today know, the, um, I asked him if we should do something special at the liturgy for him. And he said, no, no, I want something simple like the child Jesus of Bethlehem. <laughs> it worried me too. And then he explained to me, that when the three wise men came to Jesus, they didn't do anything special for him, they just left expensive gifts. <laughs> I see he's well. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.
Thanks be to God. Great is your faithfulness, O God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. By still waters into mercy, and nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is. Oh